Hi, Fab Foodies. Hello. This is Madeline. Yes. I'm Jess of Jess's Fab Food, uh, certified culinary nutrition expert and instructor and independent consultant with Epicure. Today's uh, cooking class is a snack attack, and this one was a special request from our local Bradford Today newspaper. If you're local to Bradford, I'm sure you have read many of their articles uh, covering local everything. So Natasha reached out and wondered if I could teach a virtual class that might interest a lot of our parents and kids that are watching out there. So today we're gonna do three different uh, classic snack foods that can generally be made very quickly with ingredients you probably have lying around. Kids can help. They're full of nutrition powerhouses, but they taste great and they're easy grab and go snacks that your kids can kind of get their hands on out of the fridge or the cupboard really quickly once they're prepared. So the first one we're gonna start with is actually um, a recipe I developed during my culinary nutrition program. It's an adaptation of a number of recipes that we've tried over the years and that the girls love. It's actually gonna be a sesame seaweed crisp now, if you are a child of the 80s, like me, uh, you might remember those sesame crackers. I think they're actually still available. You can maybe buy them in the store. They're super sweet and salty and probably full of all kinds of questionable ingredients. Um, but the main ingredient is sesame, sesame seeds. So we're making something similar today uh, with the twist being that they do actually have seaweed added to them. My girls love seaweed like they'll eat the sheets just as snack food but sea vegetables are actually a really great snack food because they're high in all kinds of stuff they're high in essential nutrients they are a source of vitamin c um they're actually good brain food as well so if you can hide them if your kids don't like them or uh, willingly add them to something go for it so these snack crackers they're they're sort of like a, a cracker sort of like a, a granola bar mm -hmm. are a powerhouse of nutrition so I'm actually going to let our Yay! helper over here start us off she's gonna break up the seaweed that's simple yeah and then I'm gonna have to wash my hands yes so we want if you're using like full size sheets of nori, that's the stuff that you use to roll um, sushi. You can choose whatever kind of, of seaweed you prefer. So if you want a milder flavor of seaweed, I recommend these guys um, or nori. There are other kinds out there. Some of them require soaking before you use them. And each kind of seaweed has its own nutritional benefit and reason why you might choose it. So these are smaller sheets. We're actually gonna throw about eight in the bowl. There's a bunch of them though in there. Okay, so Madeline's gonna break those up with her hands really quick. You want it into nice small pieces so that when you add in the rest of your ingredients, you don't get these huge chunks of seaweed. Now, um, I actually served these during my, one of my, fi my final project for the culinary nutrition program was to teach a live cooking class. Um, and we had to offer a few already made snack items during the class so that my um, guests could try six to eight different recipes. And I made these ones. And one of the main feedback I got was for those who maybe aren't used to seaweed and maybe don't prefer to eat it on a regular basis, uh, less seaweed. So that's why we're only doing the eight little squares in there. If you want to use less, please do. Start with two if you think that that's enough for your flavor and your taste. Um, I know these guys love it, so the eight sheets is fine for us. There's uh, there's no problem that, that they're gonna complain about. Daddy's them, but not gonna. Daddy doesn't. Eat yeah, the seaweed, Daddy doesn't so. eat the seaweed. Daddy's probably not gonna eat these. He, so don't worry. he doesn't really eat any of our snack food. He'll eat like cookies that we make. Speaking yeah. of cookies, he said on the weekend I need to learn how to make him shortbread cookies. Okay, well maybe that can be our next cooking class. Okay, so Madeline has done okay, now a I need great to go job. Wash so my you go hands. wash your hands and I'm gonna do the rest. Okay, so now you don't get to see our faces, you're just gonna see ingredients from this point out. So we have our seaweed broken up into little pieces. We are going to add to the seaweed a quarter cup of raw pumpkin seeds or pepitas. So 
The difference between a pumpkin seed and a pepita is that these are hulled, so they don't have the large, hard outside bit that you would get when you save your seeds from your pumpkin and you roast them. Um, pepitas are a great source of fiber and omega-3s. So we have a lot of seeds that we're adding to these bars, which, I mean, the name suggests that. Um, pumpkin, flax, and hemp seeds are all included here. They're really great to add to uh, kids' snack foods because they're all sources of um, omega-3s. They are a uh, protein source, so they're great brain food. Um, pumpkin and flax seeds actually are a great source of magnesium. Hemp seeds are a source of zinc. Um, chia seeds are also a sort of uh, source of magnesium. Zinc and magnesium can often be um, out of balance in young children and is often associated with um, behavior issues and things like that. So if you can feed them foods that are rich in those essential nutrients, uh, they may have a better time regulating their moods. Um, and what better way to help them than giving them snack foods that they want to eat that help keep them full, help their brain work optimally, and help them regulate their moods. So we have a quarter cup of pumpkin seeds in there. We're also gonna add a quarter cup of sunflower seeds. So they're in there. We want two tablespoons each of flax seeds, nice. lightly ground, chia seeds, so you can help with the chia seeds, two, two tablespoons two of those. Yep, two of the big spoon. One. Two. Two. And two tablespoons of the hemp seeds, so throw them in there. And then we want a quarter cup of sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are a fantastic source of um, bioavailable calcium, which as we know is great for bone development. Um, they actually have more calcium than almonds, more calcium than a glass of milk, and it's bioavailable, which means that when your little people are eating it, their body's actually able to absorb and assimilate and use it, which isn't always the case with uh, calcium. So that's why we're adding a whole quarter cup of um, the sesame seeds here. Yep, you can give it a stir. And then the last thing we're gonna add here is uh, our sweetener. So Syrup. the seaweed is gonna give us a nice salty, all of the seeds and everything in there are gonna give us a great oh, crunch. So good. We're gonna add maple syrup as our sweetener. Again, when you're choosing sweeteners for kid snacks, definitely try and choose ones that don't rely on refined white sugar. Um, refined sugar is definitely something that can have an, a negative effect on kids' mood and behavior. So there's lots of great options out there. Um, if you're looking for a dry sugar, I love using coconut sugar. I know people love um, an agave. There are a few other uh, dry crystal sugar replacements. Um, and then honey and maple syrup are great ways to add sweet if uh, a liquid sugar is not a problem. So that's so, what it looks like. We want this recipe to use a liquid sugar because we want it to actually help bind it together. How much are we gonna put of that? Um, a quarter cup, which is approximately, what do we have left in there, I think? Yeah, we have a little bit left for some pancakes. So quarter cup of pure maple syrup. This is from uh, local. Yeah. This um, is from Dawn and Debbie Howard over yeah. in East Wilmberry. If you're a frequenter of the new market, um, farmer's market that's down on Doug Duncan Drive, uh, Don and Debbie are Howard's Farms. So that's where we get our maple syrup from it's most often. To combine together. So as we stir, it, starts it to combine. gets nice and sticky. You can really smell the seaweed when it gets wet, which is nice. Mm -hmm. The um, nori is also, it's a, it's a fairly sweet seaweed. It doesn't have as much of the bitter aftertaste, which is why I love it for um, using with kids. So now that we have this nicely combined, so the chia and the flax are also gonna help 
the um, binders. Chia absorbs a lot of liquid. It's great to use in place of pectin and jam. Um, chia really helps digestion, uh, as does flax. I mean, all, all of these seeds are great sources of fiber, which really do help your digestive system. And we all know that if kids are digesting well, uh, their overall system is working better, so they will be able to regulate their moods and feel better. And the fiber really is gonna help them feel full longer. So that's always a goal when we're making snack foods for kids, uh, is that they're gonna actually feel full after eating them because uh, I don't know about you guys, but with four little people in the house for the last two months, what can we eat is a regular question and I would rather that they're reaching for stuff that is gonna keep them full long enough that they're not asking for snacks 20 minutes later. So these guys are gonna help with that. So we're gonna, spread it out on this the tray so you want to use a lined baking sheet it just makes it easier if you don't have a liner um parchment paper will work yes it just helps silicone liner. yeah if you don't have silicone liners um parchment, parchment works paper. just as well and it helps so that because this is um we're gonna put it in the oven and it's gonna dry out a bit to get yes. crispy, crispy we don't want it to stick to the pan so lining your pan is gonna help yeah not just with butter though. Uh, no, the, I mean, that's greasing your pan. Yeah. Lining your pan is different. So this helps so that it doesn't get stuck. Just keep, if you wanted to do it faster, you could put another layer of um, parchment or silicone on top and use a rolling pin and roll it out. Trying to keep the edges even will make it easier to cut this into crackers um, in the end when you're done. Uh, I do recommend that it, um, you let it completely cool before you try and break it into crackers. Okay. So there we are. We have that ready to go, um, even, flattened, sort of straight edges. So what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna put this in the oven at 250 for 45 minutes. And every 15 minutes you wanna turn the tray so that it cooks evenly in your oven. Um, okay, okay, the next snack bar we're gonna make is actually one that is one of our favorite teachers' favorite snack bar. Um, it is our popcorn chocolate snack bars. So the first step in this recipe is actually to melt together our liquid ingredients. So we need two tablespoons of coconut oil. So um, you can we were, we're gonna use this one. You can use butter uh, if you prefer. I'm gonna go get the dog in. So the coconut oil and the sunflower seed butter and melted chocolate are gonna help bind these together. So we use sunflower seed butter because uh, one of our family members is allergic to peanuts. And also because when the world is open and we can go to school, uh, sunflower seed butter can go to school and almond butter cannot. So rather than replacing peanut butter with another nut butter, we actually use a seed butter because then the girls can take these to school. And is, um, so we want you know, two nut butter I can eat be like hazelnut butter or, or almond, almond butter. yeah but then it can't go to school, school so. so we want two like, tablespoons of your nut or seed butter we're using seed butter yeah we're using sunflower, sunflower seed sunflower seed butter is a great way so we're also gonna do a quarter cup of dark chocolate chips yum yum mm -hmm. dark chocolate uh, is dairy free so mm -hmm. that was not right now that was a big, that was important uh, in this household when our youngest was a baby, she was allergic to dairy. But dark chocolate is also, it doesn't have uh, the refined sugar, it 
it is also a great source of antioxidants. So we are gonna take this and melt it till it's nice and bubbly. Okay. okay, so the next step for our popcorn bars is actually to mix our, oh. ooh, our popcorn and our nice melty ingredients. So we're gonna throw, you want about three cups of popped popcorn into your bowl here. There we go. Do we need a new bowl? Uh, no, but we're not gonna put all the popcorn in. And then we're gonna add two tablespoons of our pumpkin seeds, because the girls like them and they give nice crunch. Again, two. they add a little bit of extra nutrition. Then. Source of omegas, they're good brain food. We're gonna throw in some of the dried cranberries as well. They add a little extra sweet. So two tablespoons of them. It's harder with these ones because they're farther yeah. down. Okay, and now we're gonna add our nice melty, gooey uh, wet ingredients that we were we were melting over there. So we have yes. this is our two tablespoons of coconut oil, two tablespoons of sunflower seed butter, and a quarter cup of dark chocolate. Num num num. All nice and melty. So we're gonna pour that in. <laughs> At the bottom, you can see that it's not so liquidy at the bottom. Yeah, it's, a it's bit all more nice thicker. and gooey with the melted chocolate. So and then we have to mix it all up. Mix, Once mix, we mix, have mix, all of that in there, you want pretty much all of it. Then you want to give Whoa. it a good stir and coat all your popcorn. About this one is what we're gonna do once it's all coated is you put it into yes. your pan, this pan. you squish it flat and then, we're and then the it goes in the fridge or freezer yeah. and so what happens is that your coconut oil and your melted chocolate uh, turn solid again right yeah. so that, that's what holds these bars together popcorn's all covered so um, any square pan will do um, I, again, I like to use the silicone ones just because they are really easy to clean. Uh, they don't need extra oil. They're non-sticks, so everything pops out great. But if you don't have silicone, um, I would recommend for this one that you do line your pan, again, with um, parchment paper and make sure that it comes up to over the edges so that basically when you're done, you can just lift right out of your pan here. Um, that's the beauty of the silicone is that I don't, I, it just pops right out. I don't need to be able to lift the parchment. But again, if you don't have a silicone bar pan, um, you can use parchment on this recipe so that it makes it easy to get the bars out. So now that all of that is in there, what we wanna do is squish it down nice and flat. This is where, um, again, you can use another silicone mat or a piece of parchment paper, and then just push down really hard into the edges. Well, we're gonna break the popcorn a little bit, but we want it to be nice and, and tight so into the pan. Well, nice and snug, like on a cold winter night. So that when the chocolate and the coconut oil and the sun butter set. Our bars are nice and tight and then we can cut them into nice even shaped snack bars so that it's nice Nummy. and squished and then we're gonna put this in the freezer. Um, well freezer for about half an hour, fridge for about an hour so that everything sets and then uh, we will pop it out and show you the bars. Can I put it in the freezer? Okay. Okay, our last snack attack bar is a fan favorite. Every kid's cooking class I've ever taught where we make these, the kids love them, parents love them. My husband will eat an entire tray of them in a week if we left them unattended. These ones are delicious. And the best thing about them, they are called empty cupboard granola bars for a reason. 
uh, you basically get to throw in whatever you like. So if your kids love dried fruit and nuts, throw those in. If you want to do seeds and dried fruit, go for that. If you want to do Rice Krispies or some other crisp cereal, go for it. First ingredient in our empty cupboard granola bars is two and a half cups of toasted oats, as you saw. So Madeline is almost 10, so she is in charge of toasting the oats. You can say hi. Hi. Um, takes about four or five minutes. Toast them until they start to smell uh, toasted, essentially. So while she is monitoring the oats over there, we are going to get everything else ready to go. Similarly to our popcorn bars and the seed bars, you want some wet ingredients to bind everything together. So we need two tablespoons of coconut oil. Again, you can use butter instead if that's what you prefer. Can I do the other one? Yeah, you can bang the other one in. Just two tablespoons. Gotta get a big loud. Oh, that was easy. I just stuck it to that thing. And then we want half a cup of honey, which is approximately all that we have left in there. So but it's apparently we need to get ourselves back up to Innisfil Creek and get some more honey. So again, if you're local, <laughs> It's if you are local to Bradford, like... which if you're watching this on Bradford today, you are. Innisville Creek has some pretty good honey product. Half a cup there. of honey. There we go. Two tablespoons of coconut oil. And, and we're going to melt this on the stove while our oats get toasty. Yep. Two and a half cups of quick oats and they're just lightly toasted so that they have a nice toasty flavor. They're a little bit crispy. They smell delicious. Uh -huh, that's one of the Madeline's going to take the pan. And then this. you actually want to add Where should I put uh, it? It's right here. Yeah. two tablespoons. So we're using uh, our cocoa crunch. This is actually a combination of cinnamon, coconut, and chia seeds. So if you don't have this one, you can add in cinnamon, um, shredded coconut and chia seeds. It also has a little bit of raw cacao, which is great antioxidant, um, awesome for kids. So I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of this. Um, and if you don't have this, then you're gonna wanna do half a tablespoon of shredded coconut, a tablespoon of chia seeds, a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're gonna stir that in. And then you want a total one cup of add-in ingredients. So we are gonna throw in a quarter cup of puffed quinoa. So this is like your, your puffed rice. Um, we use the puffed quinoa instead of rice because quinoa has more nutritional um, benefits than puffed rice. So we're gonna throw in a quarter cup of the puffed quinoa. A quarter cup of No. Uh, yeah, I guess a quarter cup. So this is puffed quinoa uh, coated in dark chocolate. And so the girls love this one because when yes. we add in the warm uh, melted coconut oil and honey, it helps melt the chocolate. And then we want to throw in two Pumper. tablespoons, no, two tablespoons of sesame seeds. Again, I have mentioned I love sesame seeds because they're a great source of calcium. So yes. we're going to throw in they're two tablespoons of those. Now, uh, for those of you out there who are learning math, two tablespoons is half uh, of a quarter, quarter cup. cup. One quarter cup is four fractions. tablespoons. I'm learning fractions mm -hmm. actually. Madeline is learning fractions in math. So we're gonna throw in two tablespoons of pumpkin seeds as well. Because the girls enjoy so you can throw in another one of those. So how much is that so far? Uh, we had so one quarter cup of puffed quinoa. And plus another quarter cup would mean... Half a cup. Half a cup. And then we did and two tablespoons of this. this. And then two tablespoons of this one. So that so means how, that how much are we at now? Uh, another half cup. So we'll hold no, another quarter cup. cup. So we're another at three quarters cup. of a cup, which means we have one more quarter, quarter cup. cup. Quarter cup. We're gonna so add some. two tablespoons of sunflower seeds as well, because they make for a nice crunch in your granola bar. And then two more tablespoons of dried cranberries. Dried cranberries. The girl, my sisters love just eating 
uh, the like they'll ask, can we have raisins and almonds and cranberries for yeah. a snack? And it's just like, so, okay, but don't go crazy with them. Between the dark chocolate on the puff quinoa and the cranberries, that's where you get your sweet here. Yes. And then to this, we're going to add our liquid ingredient. Okay, so we have one more helper for this step. This is our last step in the mm. Ashla, the empty cupboard granola bars. Yes. So for a little extra sweetness, we're gonna add two tablespoons of coconut sugar. I wanna do. You can help. Coconut sugar is a great replacement, as I said, one. for brown sugar or white refined sugar. It smells good too. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's still sugar, it's still sweet. Uh, it is still going to affect your overall blood sugar levels, but it is it's easier like for your body to assimilate yes. and therefore has a, a less noticeable long-term effect over um, blood sugar levels. So it's a great way, it's a great substitute when you're making snacks for kids so that you are limiting how much refined sugar is in there. So we're just gonna give that a quick toss with no, all of our dry ingredients. And, and now we have our ingredients? melted honey and coconut oil here. So it's we're gonna add that. We just had it. Now, it's nice and warm because we just melted it on the burner. So this is what's gonna melt our chocolate that's in here. Yes, I'm, I'm just ready to watch. can see the chocolate starting to melt a little bit in there. So again, the coconut oil and the melted chocolate are gonna harden when we put our bars in the fridge. And that's what's gonna keep them in their nice granola bar shape. If you don't have a bar pan, you can just um, layer this into uh, your, like a, like a lasagna pan, a nine by 11 lasagna pan. You will probably, again, want to line it with parchment paper along the bottom. And again, enough, or you could probably get away with just your cookie sheet. Um, again, but you want to line it so that when you push your granola in there, when it is set, if you're not using a bar pan, you can lift the whole sheet of parchment paper out and then cut it into bars. This is the fun part for me. Yes, this is gonna be the fun part. Me. We take all of our nice mix here and just Pretend dump it into you your bar pan. Num num num. And then you just have to like well, are we gonna use the rolling pan thing? Um technique? Yeah, and then we're gonna spread it. All of these snack recipes are easy enough that it's a great way to get your kids involved in the kitchen. Um I find in my experience teaching kids classes and cooking with my own kids at home, the more you involve them in the process, the more likely they, they are to, eat, to eat the finished product. I mean, these finished products are pretty kid friendly, kid approved, um, but it gives them it gives them a sense of satisfaction to help you. Uh, they're learning how to do the measuring and, and understanding the fractions in there so if you're worried that your kids are not learning while they're at home with you in this current pandemic state uh this is a great learning opportunity the measuring gives them the chance to practice their math skills they can help read the recipes they get the feeling they're learning independence and self-sufficiency by being able to accomplish these tasks with you and then, like I said, having them help with the prep means that in the end, the finished product is something they are way more likely to want to eat because they participated in it. So that is a great um, tip for when you are trying some more adventurous recipes with your kids, trying something new, get them involved in the process because then they get to see the ingredients. And so if there's something that they are nervous about that that is an ingredient you're not sure they're going to like they can be part of that process so like the seaweed crisps right it's it's a different ingredient for some kids they might not be familiar with it so have them participate like madeline did here and break up all the pieces so that she knows that that's what's in there right um 
Same as we did with the popcorn bars, we are going to flatten these. So you want to push down really hard. I love this. Um, you can use parchment paper here too if you don't have the liners. Oh, my strength. I'm gonna push these down. Okay, we're gonna turn it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and again, this is a great way to get the kids involved. Okay, we're gonna check them. Oh! Yeah, they look nice and squished there. So, there we go. They're in our bar pan. Again, we're gonna put these into the fridge for an hour or the freezer for about half an hour. And once they are set, you can pop them out uh, and enjoy them. So it is time for the final reveal of our three snack attack bars. So let's do this. Okay, so here we have our final reveal. We have our chocolate popcorn bites. We have our empty covered granola bars and we have our sesame seaweed crisps. So, for the seaweed crisps, you're just going to want to peel them off your liner, whether you're using um, silicone or parchment, and then break them into snack size pieces, just like that. Your every or your empty covered granola bars, uh, just pop them out of your bar pan, or if you're using a uh, parchment paper lined sheet, pull your sheet and cut into equal bars. Your chocolate popcorn bites, you can just pop out of your pan and then either on a cutting board or a cutting mat, cut them into bars as well. So now that we've popped it out, you just cut it into Whoa. bars or bite-sized pieces. Just like that. They usually break apart by themselves, as we can yep. see here. And Madeline is going to be our official taste tester. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Which one do you want to try? The seaweed one? And then I, I want to try all of them. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Okay. Good one? Delicious. Mm -hmm. Covered granola bar. Mm. It's nice and chocolatey. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. No talking with your mouth full. And I'll taste test the popcorn mm -hmm. one for us. <laughs> I want it too. So thanks for joining us today. This is our final product. We have our chocolate popcorn bites, our empty covered granola bars, and our sesame seaweed crisps. All of these can be safely stored in your airtight containers in the fridge for up to three weeks. Uh, if you have as many children in your house as I do, I promise they won't last that long. So from Jess's Fab Food Kitchen to your kitchen, thanks for joining us today. Enjoy your snack attack treats, and uh, I hope that you will uh, choose to join us again. Thanks again to Tasha at Bradford today for giving us the chance to put this video together for you. And if you feel like following along, uh, subscribe and watch the rest of our videos. We're, we're cooking together most days in this kitchen and I try my best to share something new every week. So thanks again for joining. Have a great day guys. Bye. 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 Bye.